So that lovely combination of sweat, helmet, and sleep position. <laughs> it gives and it shoving it up. <laughs> it gives a style. I remember it well. <laughs> How are you? Um, it's been a bit of a challenging couple of weeks, actually, um, on a Has couple it? of levels. But, um, you know, work's always there. Is That's cool. Right. Um, God, I do look very Union Jack in red and blue and whatever. <laughs> Vive le, le king, le, what do you say? Vive le roi, vive le roi. Le roi. Yeah, vive, vive le roi. roi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Le roi, we say le roi est mort, vive le roi. Like the king is dead, long live the king. Like vive le roi. Um, <laughs> um, good, right, so. As tempting as it is to do the subjunctive after what you've just said, we're going to do pronouns. So, three fingers, all right? Just say for me, what should we say first? Can you please say for me, me, te, Nouveau. Just say that for me. M te nouveau. M te nouveau. M e t e n o u s b o u s. Just say that for me. M te nouveau. M te nouveau. M e t e n o u s b o u s. M te nouveau. Say them again. M te nouveau. M te nouveau. Can you reverse them? Vous nous demain. <laughs> you, you back. Good, good, good. Right. Those three pronouns do not give a rat's ass whether they are reflexive, direct, indirect. We're going to talk about that in a second. They just don't care. So those four are completely safe. So if you are doing a pronoun, if you're doing a verb to something with a me, m is your word. If you are doing a verb with something to a you, t is your word. Whether it is me to myself, somebody doing it to me, somebody giving something else to me. We just don't need to care. M te nouveau will be completely faithful for all of the positions we're about to talk about. All right. So let's talk about the positions. We've got direct, indirect and reflexive. So direct rule of absolute gold with direct. Do not listen to English as to whether or not there is the word to in the English. So, for example, if I said I speak to Brooklyn, you'd be tempted to go, oh, OK, that is like an indirect situation, whatever, 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 as opposed to I love Brooklyn, that is direct. Let's just talk about a couple of facts. If you've done Spanish as your background, although you know like loismo and leismo, you know about the practice of lo versus le, because you have the a that goes with the personal object, so like, you know, voy a hablar a Brooklyn, you know, you know, um, you know, a bit of a Brooklyn. Your temptation, because you've done Spanish, is to whack an a everywhere. All right. So, firstly, we're going to ignore Spanish. We're going to ignore English. Direct means that if you had the normal sentence, which means no replacements, no pronouns. We're not saying her. We're not saying him. We're not saying it. We're not saying them. We're just literally saying everything in full, like I buy the phone. I find a key. If in your sentence in French, you go directly from the verb into the object, from the thing, that is going to be direct. Okay. Let's make that absolutely clear. So if you go from verb word into object word with no preposition in the middle, no a or de or anything at all, that is going to be direct. So I'm going to say some sentences and you're going to say back to me whether or not this is a direct relationship or an indirect relationship. Okay. okay. Je connais Brooklyn. Je connais whom Brooklyn. Direct. direct or indirect. Lovely. There's no preposition in the way. There's no at in the way. Je parle à Brooklyn. Direct or indirect? Indirect. It's that simple. All right. Je Voix, Brooklyn. Direct, direct. direct. Great. Lovely. So that is what we mean by direct. Don't be listening to two and all kinds of stuff in English. For example, I speak to Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, I, sorry, I say to Brooklyn in English, the, the two there would make you, oh, well, indirect. I say to Brooklyn. It's indirect. I tell Brooklyn. The English there would make you think that that was direct. Can you hear what I'm saying? Because it's going, mm -hmm. I 
tell Brooklyn. So don't be listening to English whether or not there's a two. I give Brooklyn a hug. In the sentence, I give Brooklyn a hug, what is being given? Brooklyn or the hug? Uh, the hug. Do you see what I'm saying? But English sounds like you're saying, I give Brooklyn, like I'm going to pick Brooklyn up and stick her over there. So don't listen to English and don't listen to Spanish. Listen to the French when there's no pronouns. All right. OK. Or as we're going to get into when you go into the dictionary and the dictionary will have what we call the dictionary form, where it very nicely uses quelqu'un. So if you look up a verb and it says da 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 à quelqu'un, to someone, you go ah indirect because of à quelqu'un, to someone. If you look up the verb and it says like in blue, like tr, trans, you know, it, it, that just means transitive direct. That just means normal, just absolutely normal, okay. direct. All right. So direct, indirect. So, for example, if I said I give Brooklyn a rose, what is being given Brooklyn or the rose? The rose. So in that sentence, the rose or Brooklyn, which one is direct? Which one is directly being given? I give Brooklyn the rose. Which the one's rose. the direct one? Great. And which one is the indirect one? Brooklyn. That's exactly right. So we can obviously yeah. have direct and indirect in the sentence. If we go the full way, which you haven't got to do yet, you'd say, I give the rose to Brooklyn. We tend to deal with the direct first. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you say I give it to her, which is what we're coming to, we just need to remember the pronoun for the rose is going to be the direct one and the pronoun for Brooklyn is going to be the indirect one. All right. Uh, OK, yeah, yeah that's all you. it is. That's what we're getting to, because basically I give Brooklyn a hug. I give Brooklyn the job. Um, I could replace Brooklyn with I give her the job. I could replace the job with I give her it. I give it her. Okay. Both yeah. of those things could be replaced with the pronoun. Yeah. And okay. I could obviously, I then need to go, well, hang on, which, which one's a direct replacement and which one's an indirect replace, replacement? It's that simple. So we've got direct, indirect, and then we've got reflexive. So as with your Spanish, where you whack S-E, say everywhere, we're going to do the same in French. So reflexive, when you first learn it in a textbook, looks like it's about getting ready in the morning. I wash myself. I brush my hair. I, but as you know from the Spanish, it's like, you know, the door opens. Is the door opening a pop-up shop in Shoreditch? No, the door is opening. Mm. So therefore the door is opening itself. So you whack in a, a, a sir, you know. Um, Brooklyn's French is improving. Is Brooklyn's French improving her job prospects? Possibly. Is Brooklyn's French improving her love life? Possibly. But in the sentence <laughs> Brooklyn's French is improving, we're not saying it's improving anything else. So that would be Brooklyn's French is improving itself. So we whack the reflexive everywhere. Yeah. OK. So reflexive is when the person, as you know, doing the verb, the, it comes back to the same person or it two people, it comes back to the same person. Finally, and it's exactly the same grammar as reflexive, that's all we're doing today in new grammar, we're just then going to learn the words and the bits, is reciprocal, where we reciprocate. So let's just say you and the, the bloke have a, a shower and he's in, the, let's say you're having a bath and he's having a shower. You are washing yourself and he's washing himself. That is reflexive. So, Luke, we are getting washed. So we are washing ourselves. We wash each other. So you're foaming his back and he's foaming your back. We're washing each other. That is reflexive. So he, strictly speaking, is not washing himself. You, strictly speaking, are not washing yourself. But if more than one person is doing, a dive, is doing an equal verb to the other person, then that is reciprocal. So, for mm. example, if you and I right now, we are talking to each other. I am not talking to me. You are not talking to you. But we are doing an identical opposite verb to each other. Okay. So that is reciprocal, not reflexive. But it's the same freaking grammar for most of the stuff apart from certain spellings. All right. OK. Mm -hmm. So as far as we're concerned, we're going to call them reflexive today. Some people in grammar call them pronominal, which is a like pronominal verbs, which is a stupid title because if you use le, which is a pronoun, la, le, me, to, they're all pronouns. 
do you need to say phenomenal verbs? So we're going to say reflexive. So our three big fuck off categories are direct, indirect, reflexive. I'm going to say some sentences and you're just going to shout back direct, indirect, reflexive. Okay. I wash myself. Um, reflexive. Lovely. I wash you. D direct. That's it. There's nothing else involved. Yeah. I give you the towel. What relationship is the towel we give, direct or indirect? I give you the towel. The towel is direct, but the you nice is work. indirect. That's it. We're good to go. That's lovely. So let's look at m and t and nu and vu, m e t e nu n o u s v o u s. So the first thing you'll notice is that m and t, okay, are m and t. They are that low sound here. M okay. T. Can you now say for me bits before verbs except before infinitives? Bits before verbs except before infinitives. Bits before verbs except before infinitives. So one more time. Bits before verbs except before infinitives. So what that means is in French, you we've already said that there's this top row and this bottom row. We've got the version with no auxiliary and we've got the version with an auxiliary, yeah? The pronoun, the, the, the me, the te, the nous, the vous, in a minute, the le, la, le, in a minute, the lui, le, whatever the pronoun is, and then combos of both, are always going to go first. Yeah. So if you had your, like, let's say, he, he, he eats. Il mange, il mangeait, il mangera, il mangerait. Uh, we want a subjunctive infinitive. Let's do the bottom one. Il a mangé, il avait mangé, il aura mangé, il aurait mangé. Look where the the goes, if we say he eats it. Mm -hmm. Il le mange, il le mange, il le mangera, il le mangerait, il la mange. We'll talk about the join in a second. Il l'avait mangé, il l'aura. So the, the, the pronoun, it's kind of like you've got the person doing it, you choose where it's going, and then you give me your verb. Yeah, okay. so you need to get that out the way first. Whether you've got an auxiliary or not, we don't care. He, it, eats. He, it, has eaten. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So the only time it will be different is if you have a two form, an infinitive, and you're going to stick it before the infinitive that is the last infinitive. So if you've got like, I'm going to do it, You've got, obviously, in Spanish, the possibility of saying lo voy a hacer or voy a hacer lo. You don't have that in French. You have to say je vais le faire. You're going to stick it before the your infinitive. infinitive. Okay. If you had lots of infinitives, I'm going to have to do it. So multiple infinitives. Je vais devoir le faire. It's going to go before the last infinitive. I'm going to have to try to do it. Je vais devoir essayer de uh, le faire. I'm going to have to try to keep doing it, Luke. Je vais <laughs> devoir essayer de continuer à, you can say continuer de, but we say continuer à, le faire. So in other words, if you've got an infinitive, you stick your infinitive, stick your pronoun before the infinitive. Apart from that, stick it before your main verbs. Okay. So with that in mind, could you please say he loves? How would you say he loves? Il aime. Good. You'll notice that m and t will both drop to m apostrophe. Yep, they'll both drop to m apostrophe. So could you please say for me, he loves me, he loves me. Il m'aime. Good, do it on sound, don't do it on visual. Yep, yeah. il m'aime. Oh. Could you say for me, il he loves you? Il t'aime. How would you say, he gives me uh, a flower? Une fleur. He gives me a flower. Verb donner, he gives me a flower. Donner. Il... Oof, okay. Il me, me, ah! Il me donne so what's the short fleur? form of donne? What's the short form of donne? Don. Lovely, nice twang. Well done. How do you say he gives me? Il me donne. Nice. Now, what I like there was that you went il me. You didn't go il me. Mm. So what a lot of people do is because il is a head twang, me is a chest twang, and a lot of people homogenize them and go il me don. You went il me, and you did that beautiful slide, il which is don. really coming on nicely. So il me donne une fleur. Put it together. He gives me a flower. Il me donne une fleur. Lovely. Donne une fleur. That was fucking brilliant. Notice <laughs> in il me donne une fleur, me is, is, what is the me there? Is it direct or indirect? He gives me a flower. Is the me there uh, direct or indirect? 
indirect. Good, but we don't care. It's the same bloody word, isn't it? Because it's m o t o n u o v u. Could you say he gives us a flower? He gives us a flower. Uh, il nous donne une fleur. Lovely. Can we acknowledge that nu and vu are both the subject and can also be the pronoun on the receiving end of the verb? So how do you say we wash using the verb laver? How would you just normally say we wash? Uh, nous lavons. Nice accent, madam. How would you say we wash us as in we wash ourselves? We're going to use the same word twice at the beginning. Nous lavons. That's it, exactly right. Yeah, no. That's it. Also, we'll talk about it in a second. When you do pronouns that can stand on their own at the end of a sentence, as in with me, with you, like where you'd have sort of like, you know, conmigo, contigo, all this business, avec mm. moi, avec toi, avec lui, avec elle, avec nous, avec all of this, that will also be nous and vous. Nous and vous are just fricking everywhere. If you need something with an us or a you plural, just go with nous and vous. Lovely. So can you now say he gives you formal a job? And well, the word we'll use for a job, we could have said un boulot for slang. We could have said un emploi. We'll go with un travail. So can you say for me, he gives you um, he gives you a job? Um, what is the you, you plural? Uh, Me and te and nous and v, what was it? V. V. That's it. So same again. It could have come at the beginning, but it's now going to be in the sentence. So let's change it. Say he gives you a flower. Go back to une fleur because you're familiar with that. So he gives you a flower. Il, uh, il vous donne une fleur. Good. He gave. If the verb is donné, how would you say he gave, which is an action? What do actions have, my darling? Auxiliaries. Spot on. So he gave one, two, three. What is just he gave using the verb donné? Il. Il a fait donné. Uh, uh. What's my standard word verb method? Present, was, will, would, yes? Mm -hmm. So what's my first one on the bottom? Present in the middle, yeah? Okay. Remember the, the standard past is just present in the middle. The was in the middle, ave donna, is he had given me, yeah? Oh, shit. All right, say, say for me, I have eaten. Just quickly say for me, I have eaten. J'ai uh, mangé. Gorgeous work, what tense was j'ai there in the middle? Present. Yeah. Have eaten. Uh, yeah, I yeah, have yeah. To, my confession is I'm struggling with the on the auxiliary. I feel all the others are fine, but the auxiliary ones are kind of blowing my mind at the moment. You mean half of them. <laughs> half of them. Yeah. <laughs> By definition, you mean half of them. Right. So say for me, I ate. J'ai mangé. J'ai mangé. What tense is, is j'ai there? I have. Yeah. So what tense is that? Present in the middle. Yeah. It's the present. Yeah. yeah. I have. Now make the verb in the middle the was tense. The whole thing is in the was tense, but make the verb in the middle the was tense. As you've said earlier, what would that be? J'avais mangé. And that would be I had eaten. Yeah. I have. That would be I, I had, had eaten. Yes. Yeah? So you might like to use this trick. Had in the middle in English, was in the middle in French. Had in the middle in English, was in the middle in French. So if you're saying okay. Brooklyn had a job, Brooklyn had an apple, that is not had in the middle. That is had in its own right. That is had in its yes. own right. So that will either be Brooklyn had as a description. So on stage that night, she had whatever, a red costume, a description, elle avait, or mm -hmm. it could be she had action, elle a eu, yeah, action, okay. like a coffee, yeah. But if we are saying Brooklyn had spoken previously with the director, then had in the middle in English, English was, was in the middle, middle in English. French. So not elle a parlé, but elle avait, avait. parlé. Yeah. It's like your Spanish. If you've got a, 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 and then you said he had spoken, you're going to use había, habías, había. You're going to use the mm. imperfect. You're going to use the imperfect in the middle. It's yeah. exactly the same. You'll use the was tense in the middle. But don't worry about that for now. So could you quickly one more time say for me, he has given. Plain and simple, just present in the middle. How would you say he has given? Il a donné. Now say for me the way you would normally say it. Nice and smooth. Il a donné. Gorgeous. 
Now it's safe for me, he gave me. So notice, Brooklyn, my darling, that would either be he has given me or he gave me. It would be the same shit. If it's an action, it's just, the, the, you know, the, the, that's our standard past. The standard past in English is one word, he gave me. We have mm. he has given me, but it's either very, very recent, oh, he, this morning he's given me, or in my lifetime, he has given me a rose just twice, you know. Or Spanish, you know, it'd be like, you've obviously got like your auxiliary past, but most of the time you would prefer hablé, hablaste, habló, hablaste, mm -hmm. hablaron. You know, you go to the praetorates, you know, el pretérito. We're not like that in French. A standard, if it's an action, stick the have in it. That's what we'll or stick the B in it. That's our standard past. The one that's one word you haven't even done. And that is for books. That's called le passé simple, the simple past. And as mm. far as you're concerned, that's for books. That's literally for books. In terms of your spoken French, as far as you, you, you could have an, an elegant dinner party lifestyle in Paris for like, you know, 12 months, you're not going to be speaking the passé simple. Yes. Yeah. And that's like Latin looking, you know, it'd be like um, parler, parla, parla, parlam, parla, parler. It's like, you know, it's not, it's not whatever. You don't need to come up with it. You just need to recognize it in books. So save me again. Then he, he gave, action he gave. Il a donné. But don't stress the auxiliary. Il a donné. You've got it. Okay. <laughs> Now say he gave me. Il m'a donné. You've got it. He gave you, singular. Il t'a donné. Don't stress the middle, but yeah. Il t'a donné. You've got it. He had given you. Stick with stick with the same to, but he had given you. Uh, had in the middle in English, uh, was in the middle in French. Il t'a donné. Il t'avait donné. If you think, Brooklyn, of all the words that we've used for the have in the middle, we've got a or ave or aura or ore, all of them link beautifully with the mo. Mave, mora. Mm. Torre, Tave, they all link beautifully. He, um, he gave us, he gave us, we've now got the nu, how do you think we're going to link the nu to il a donné? How do you think that's going to link? Uh, il, il nous a donné. Brilliant work. So you might like to donné. think the two longer ones are going to link and the two shorter ones are going to go sh short. He gave you plural or he gave you formal? Uh, il, uh, il vous avait donné? Gave, just normal, gave, not had given. Ah. Not normal. Yeah, go on. Il vous a. Il vous a donné? Good. Everybody I teach that is doing well loves ave. They all love the ave donné. They all love doing that. Don't worry, it's a completely normal thing to prefer that one. All right? It's just a nicer sounding word than il vous a donné, because it's just, it's a word you can get yourself into, yeah? Yeah. Good. Lovely. Let's now talk then about, let's do some reflexive. So could you please say for me, I wash myself. It will be the same, m and t and lu and vous for all the same, those four. So could you please say for me, I wash myself. Je me lave. Present tense. Ah, je me lave. Nice mouth, good. If I gave you the verb amuser, amuser, yes. to amuse or enjoy, could you say you enjoy yourself, you amuse yourself, using to? Uh, tu t'amuses. Flawless. Could you say for me, we get washed using the verb laver? Now, when you look up a verb in the dictionary in Spanish, it's all very funny because it says arse, doesn't it? It says A-R and then S-E on the end, like arse. <laughs> ha, 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 it says arse. In French, you'll never have that. You'll have se laver. It'll be written separately. Obviously, the verb laver exists without the reflexive, but to get washed, se laver. So you know it is reflexive by definition. Um, you know, a pronominal is it will sometimes say, but I dislike that term. So could we say, could you say for me, we get washed using nous? We get washed using nous. Hmm. Nous... You'll, need to, uh, you'll need to double up the word, won't you? Because you need the one for the we, the one for the... Us and then the wash. Yes, yeah, so nun. Nous nous lavons. Flawless. Go again. Enjoy your work. <laughs> nous nous lavons. Nice. Bloody quick. 
consonants, madam. Could you now do exactly exactly the same thing? <laughs> I'll teach you to do tight consonants in French. I just can't even now doing it. That happens <laughs> when, when you say French and you go super oui, alors nous nous l'avons, and then you go to speak in English. It, it does feel quite big. Um, I did a language trip uh, two years ago. I do one every year, but I did one two years ago. And this is lovely lad called Harry. He just qualified as a doctor and they were like banned from English for the whole week. And on the last day, I was like, right, chill, just let's just you guys can just eat patisserie and we'll just walk around and chill in English. <laughs> and, and when he went to go and speak in English, he was like, oh, oh my God, this is really difficult. I was like, result, Luke, result, result. <laughs> They're result. gonna lose their English if they carry on. I know, I know, I know, that was the goal. So can we basically, now, so can you say for me, you, what you guys, or you form will get washed. I'm gonna need the double up again. Vous vous, uh, vous, vous l'avez? Great. Vous vous l'avez? Good, okay. And that would be the same with any tense. Vous vous laviez, you were getting washed. Vous vous laverez, you will get washed. Vous vous laveriez, you know, whatever, wherever you go, it's washed. going to be the vous vous. Don't worry about that. You haven't got to be bang on top of them. You've just got to know what they are. All okay. you, you need to know from last week is the slogan, yeah? A, soft, hard. Everybody A, E on E, A. Mm -hmm. Ray, ra, ron. Ray of light, re on re, -ay. You just mm -hmm. need to know that. And then to know that it repeats on the auxiliary. Just literally knowing that poem is enough from last week. Right. So now we come to the third people. Yeah. So he, she, it, they, them, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. So in other words, anything that is not m and t and nu and vu. Are we in agreement? Anything that is not m and t and nu and vu. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really nice. You've got one version with one word. One version with two words, one version with three words. So that's okay. it. So weirdly, let's start with the reflexive first, because A, it is one word, and B, you know it from Spanish. It is su, S-E. So we've had m, we've had t, we've had, we've got su. Just that's the same it. as Spanish, like, you know, say whatever the, the verb is, yeah? It's just S-E, su for self. So could you please say for me, I wash myself? Oh, oh no, it's just what we've just done. Je me lave. Brooklyn, get over the idea. You're on audition mode with me all the time. You might be given a choreography you already know and love. It's not always a test. It's not always like, right, I now want to see the nasty step. It could just be something that you know to get you into the nasty step. Does that make yeah, sense? I feel like it's a test. No, no, it's not a test. There's no test because half of what we say is normal in French. It's not all a challenge. I mean, I love that you're on battle mode. You're like Serena Williams in the middle of the court. <laughs> but it could just be normal. So basically, adre adrenally, I've been living on adrenaline for two weeks. It's horrible. You cannot be this adrenal. Just, just yeah, relax, relax, relax. Right. So say for me, I get washed. Normal, normal. I get washed. Je me love. You get washed. Relax, relax. Um, tu te laves. Good. All I need you to do is recognise the template, the pattern from what you've done. So je me lave. Right. What would the je be? It would become a t <laughs> What would the me be? It would become a tu. So tu te lave. What would be he gets washed and we've said it's su for the third person. Il, What's he gets washed? Il se lave. Great. Bearing in mind we know how to do a join. Could you please say for me he amuses himself. He amuses himself. He enjoys himself. Il s'amuse. Job done. Notice that the they is also the su, like in Spanish. Okay, it's the same reflexive, it's the same mm. reflexive. So could you please say for me, he speaks to himself. He speaks to himself in three words. Um, il se parle. Nice, high, al, nice, low, uh. Very, very good. Could you now say for me, they speak to themselves, which although spelt differently, will sound exactly the fucking saying. Could you say for me, they speak to themselves. It'll sound exactly the same as what you've just said. Did we hear the instruction? It'll sound exactly the same as what you've just said. Oh, what, it, what, what, did, what did you just say for he speaks to himself? What did you literally just say? He speaks to himself. You did it beautifully. What was it? Il se parle. And did I not congratulate you on how nice it was? He did. Yeah. And did I not just then say, could you now say he, they speak to himself? And did oh, I they. 
And did I literally not say the sentence? Did I literally not say the sentence? It will sound exactly the same as what you've just said. <laughs> so could you now say for me, they speak. Good <laughs> God, I thought that one was too easy. Could you now say they speak? It was. That's Don't... why I overcomplicated it. Il se parle. Good, because we've got to be careful going, je, tu, il, nous, because life isn't like that. We've got to jump around. Good. Yeah. So in other words, although the bow there would be spelt P-A-R-L-E-N-T, it's the same. <laughs> il se parle. We know in context. Why would we know in context? Because when we use a pronoun, we know who we're on about. Yeah. If I say, I did her class, who have you been talking about? Whose class? How's yeah. Brooklyn? Oh, God, it's been ages since I've done a class. She's, she's got a job. Um, how's Phil? I did his class on Friday. We know who we're on about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ingers. Yeah, no, I didn't do it Monday. It was bank holiday. Um, she taught, I just didn't move. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so when we use pronouns or possessives, we have to know who the people are. You come and stay in my house. By all means, bring boy fee, whatever, we'll go up. Um, you just might need to help me trim the roses because I haven't touched them. And basically, <laughs> you're in the guest bedroom. And I come in the morning and I go, do you want, do you want one? You'd be like, you'd grab Gaetan's hand and you'd be like, stay very, very still. Don't move and keep the duvet <laughs> over you. And maybe he won't see that we're naked. And I, if I then brought out a cup of, like, you know, coffee from my, if I'm like, do you want one? You know that the pronoun one is referring to the cup of coffee. Yes. Yeah. If I came in with a cup of tea, well, well let's say like a teapot and um, it's all china at my home. I came in with a teapot and like a coffee, you know, cafetiere. And I go, which one? One, you'd go, oh, which drink? If I say, which, we're going out somewhere really lovely and I, we're popping on a tie. And I say, which one? And I'm holding up a blue, pardon this gesture. But like, yeah, I'm holding up, <laughs> I'm holding up, um, I'm holding up, um, um, I'm holding up a red one and a blue one. And I say, which one? You know what one refers to. You know, yeah. so we, we know pronouns because we've already spoken about them. Yeah. yeah. It's like, as you know, from the Spanish, it's like if, if he and she is the same, you might not say, you know, el, ella, but if we're talking about two different people, you might bring it in so that you know who's the boy, who's the girl. It's exactly yeah. the same. So, so, so could you please say for me, I, um, I am going to wash myself. I am going to wash myself. Future. Is it future or is it the go plus the infinitive version? Remember? Oh, bollocks, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna, it's that simple go plus the long form. And we know where the pronoun goes in relation to the infinitive. So just build it up for me first. Just say for me, I'm going. Uh, je vais. Nice join. Could you say for me, I'm going to wash with just one word added? Je vais. Je vais laver. Now, that wouldn't work in French unless you said what you were going to wash. Like, je vais laver la voiture, je vais laver okay. les vêtements, je vais laver whatever. I'm going to go and wash. Je vais laver Brooklyn, you know. If you said, I'm going to wash, as in I'm going to get washed, I'm going to wash myself, where would the pronoun go? Could you please say, I'm going to wash myself? Je vais... Uh, je vais me laver. Lovely. I'm enjoying the difference in vowels. You should be really proud. Stop giving yourself a hard time. You're bang on target. All right. Okay. Run through them for me. Could you say for me, you are going to wash yourself. Tu, tu vas... Je, je no, 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 no. no. When I say you, to... just say you. Tu. Don't switch it. Say tu vas... Yeah, you going. Tu vas... Tu vas te laver. Good. He is going to wash himself. We remember the surf for self. Surf for self. He's going to wash himself. Il, il va se laver. We are going to wash ourselves using nous. Um, uh, nous, nous, allons. Allons, nous allons nous laver. Good. Now let's do, we are going to use, we're going to use ourselves. We are going to wash ourselves using en. Do you remember we have this cheeky on version for we as well? Yeah? Yes. And whose verbs did I tell you that en uses he and she he it she, uses yeah. the, the normal he and she verbs and guess what it also uses the su so, so if you say lave? we get washed on se lave is just as lave. correct as nous nous lavons so could you say for me we are going to get washed using on on va on va se on va se laver sorry smooth it out on va se laver good don't train your brain train your mouth you're you're a dancer you do muscle memory and you've got a damn good damn good tight little consonant so don't go oh yeah i need that i need that i need that get it in your mouth on va se laver on va se laver 
that's it. You, you need to come back to that part of the routine and just go, I know that bit from the corner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So again, on vas se On vas se laver. Gorgeous. We're going to get washed. Nous allons nous laver. Vous allez vous laver. Ils mm. vont se laver. We're clear. It'd be, you know, the Ils same. Ils vont sur. se laver. Yes. Good. So that was our reflexive. So, or reciprocal. Or reciprocal. So how would you say they speak to each other? So what do you need for reciprocal? More than one person to do this to each other. So mm-hmm. we are going to wash ourselves. Nous, or we, we wash ourselves, basically. Nous nous lavons. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we, we wash each other. Nous nous lavons. And we get washed, we wash ourselves. It's the same French, we just know in context. So could yeah. you please say for me, we speak to each other. Reciprocal and reflexive is the same grammar for the moment. We speak to each other using nous. Nous nous parlons. They um, see each other. The verb is voir. Uh, voir, 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 voyons, Ver. voyez, voir. So the verb you're going to use is voir. voir. Just voir. So they okay. see each other in three words. Ils, ils, ils voient. Where's the each other? Ils. Oh, sorry. Ils se voient. That's it. Ils voient will come to your mouth because of they see. But we're now adding a pronoun. Yeah, yeah. il se voit. All right. So, so if you say, oh, how do Brook- how's Brooklyn doing with, you know, with, with Gaetan? Oh, they see to the when she's in, in port, whatever, you know, il se voit, you know, whatever, you know, okay. Mm. Great, uh, lovely. Um, oh, how often do you see Brooklyn? Oh, we see to the when I do her class. On se voit quand je fais son cours, mm. when I do her class. You know, on se voit, we see each other. Good. On se voit. Lovely. Yeah. Great. So we did the version with the so. So that covers any he, any she, any they in the reflexive or the reciprocal whack in se only thing you might need to do is s apostrophe we know that on samus yeah whatever, whatever whatever we're good then we come to the we said we've done a version with one word. one word let's do a version with two words the indirect with two syllables sorry my bad if i said words i mean syllables the two syllable method the, so just this is a really, really patronising thing to say. Direct, indirect, which is a longer word between direct and indirect, which is a longer word? Indirect. And the words used to show the indirect are longer. So okay. jumping ahead, the words for the direct, we're not doing it now, we're doing it in about a minute and t- or two, is just <laughs> literally the word for the. Le, la, le. Yeah, okay. it's just literally the word for the. The direct. The direct. Whereas the words for the indirect are lui, which is a diphthong by definition, but lui, and leur. So just say those words for me, lui, leur. Lui, leur. You said it like you've been saying it all your life. So basically, let's just quickly acknowledge that lui and leur both exist as words elsewhere. They both exist as words elsewhere. Okay. Let's talk temporarily about pronouns that go at the end of a damn sentence. So, in other words, not before the verb, at the end of a clause, after a preposition. So, with me, for, you know, um, you know, uh, for you, for, you know, for, without him and all this business, you know. Um, like me, like para mi in Spanish, rather than, you know, like me hablas. Yeah, like the ones that change. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, okay. You know, yeah. So these, you know, how do you say, let's practice with me. How do you say with me? Avec, m- avec moi. Good. Avec moi. Great. How do you say with you? Avec, t- avec toi. Good. We're not going to use to because it's not doing the verb. We're not going to use mm. to because it's not having the verb done to it. it it's, it's after a preposition. With you, for you, without you, on you, in you. Ooh. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Obviously, to you, to you, although we can sometimes, and there are are times when we do use a toi, majoritatively, we like to stick with the to. Most of the time with the the, um, to the person, we try and go with the one that goes before the verb. I'm not saying we never use the to you one. We use it with think, for example. I'm thinking of you. Je pense à toi. We don't say je te pense. There's a very good reason why we do things like that. You'll get to it when we do it. So you do use them, but to you don't always be after a. Most of the time it'll be me, to, no. We will try and use, you know, the the one that goes before the verb. 
So what's with him? Avec lui. So at the end of a sentence, lui is blue for a boy. Pardon okay. me to be binary gendered people, but there you go. So with him, avec lui. For him, pour lui. In the middle of a sentence, <laughs> before the verb, lui means indirect. So you don't need to think of that as two. It's just an indirect form of him or her. So I speak to him, je lui parle. I speak to her, same shit, je lui parle. So I'll say that again. Indirectly, we have a single version, no gender, lui, in the middle of the sentence. And we have a plural version, leur. So I give hmm. him a present. Je lui donne un cadeau. Just say that for me. Je lui donne un cadeau. Un cadeau. Un cadeau. Slide it through for me, madam. Je lui donne un cadeau. Je lui donne un cadeau. That was brilliant. What's the plural indirect? Leur. Say, I give them a present. Je, le... Je leur donne un cadeau. Great. At the end of a sentence, pour lui, after a preposition, that is blue for a boy. That means for him. Hmm. For her, at the end of a sentence, pour, any idea what the her is at the end of a sentence? Pour. Elle? Uh, uh, elle. Elle. Okay. L, e double L E. Like Elle McPherson, Elle, mm. like, the, like the magazine. So say for me, with with him at the end of a sentence. How do you say with him? Avec lui. Avec lui. Nice. Great at the end of a clause. Say for me with her. Think of the magazine. Avec, Avec elle. Nice. You fast off the... Great. Guess what us is? Same old shit. It just keeps cropping up. There's that bloody N-word. Would you please say for me with us? Avec nous. Avec nous. Nice. Make sure we're not naked. Avec nous. Avec nous. Good. With you plural or you formal? Same old V word. What's with you plural? Avec vous. Avec vous. Great. Now them, if they're not all, if they're all feminine, same crap as elle, but just with an S on the end. Avec elle. Pour elle. Same, same, same sound. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I suppose like a, 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 but you just don't hear the S. If you've got for them, oh, E, U, X, the noise men make. Yeah, right, mate. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, uh. E U X. Uh. So could you please say for me with them avec avec eux. Nicely joined for them. Pour pour, pour eux. Nicely joined. You are the first person I've ever taught who's joined it the first time, ever. Because it sounds weird. It's new. Pour eux. It's new. It won't keep saying it till it doesn't sound weird. That's a very good instinct. That's the dancer in you. We love, we love, we love. If it sounds weird, are you going to need to say in your life for them? You might have kiddies. You might, whatever, just be moving with your bloke. Listen, you're going to go and see your mom. Listen, I've got this for them. Yeah, I've made something, whatever. Pour eux. You're going to need to say it loads. Yeah, mm. you can almost get quite emotionally attached to lovely little things you're going to say this stuff about. It's a totally normal thing to say. You know, oh, listen, it's up for you. Listen, take your mum's Christmas present. We'll see you later. Pour eux, for them. You know, whatever. Yeah. Mm. Say for me for them, if it was two girls, for them. Pour. Pour elle. Nice. So we've got moi, toi, nous, vous, as per normal. We don't have to panic about those. We've got lui and elle. And we've got o and l. But coming back into the middle of the sentence, our two indirect ones are lui and le. Le. All right. So say for me, I give him a flower. Une fleur. I give him a flower. Okay. Him. Je lui. No. Yes. But you, you're right, yeah. yeah. But it's not about fleur. the fact that it's Brooklyn. When it's in, okay, when it's indirect, we don't have a gender in the pronoun. Think about it that way. We just don't care. We have a single version, lui, for boy and girl, and mm. we have a plural version, le, le. For, for anybody. You don't mm. need to care about gender if it's indirect. Say for me, I give indirect. him a flower again. Uh, je lui donne une fleur. Can you give me, I give her a flower, which will be exactly the same sentence? Je lui donne une fleur. That went well, because the last time I said to you, it'll be the same sentence. We, <laughs> we did. I changed it completely. It's like when there's some chick that's not been following in class and all of a sudden she just randomly starts doing some like attitude turn on a leg again. And we're like, hang on, you couldn't manage the step, step, close, close. But you just now want to do. OK, fine, 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 fine. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, 
Um, my left toe is so, so bad at the moment. I'm probably going to have to have steroids in it. And it's like, um, with Phil's ballet on Thursday was like, I was like, oh my God, I can't even turn on one leg. And then suddenly halfway through the class, I don't know what blood vessel broke or paralyzed the toe, but it suddenly felt less painful. And I just couldn't stop turning on it. I was like, I just had to remind myself that this, this was, I was it, oh, it's the most flitty thing in the entire world. Um, good. Um, lovely. I give them a flower. I give them a flower. Indirect, off you go. Je, l... Je leur donne une fleur. Good. And we're not doing them today, but where else do we see the word leur? In the possessives. My house, mon mamé, ton tate, son sassé, the possessives, you know. Um, yeah. Our, notre, notre, no, we'll do them, but not today. Votre, votre, vos, leur, so their house, leur maison. Mm. Yeah. So when you've got sous casa and sous casa, his house, their house, in French it changes that his and hers and theirs. So leur, L-E-U-R, or L-E-U-R-S if it's plural, is the possessive adjective their, their house. So okay. you've met leur before and you've met lui before, but you ain't using them that way now. All right. Yes. Mm. Great. So in other words, so far, then we've got mutter nouveau for everybody. So for reflexive, he, she, it, they. Lui and le, singular and plural. Let's finish yeah. with the easy one. The directs are le, la, le. Masculine it word, mas masculine the word, feminine the word, plural the word. Le, la, le. Okay. All right. Le, la, le. And again, like we did with me and te and nous and vous, the shorter ones will go l, l apostrophe, mm -hmm. like m went to m, m apostrophe, and the le, because of the s, will go les, if you've got a join. Yeah? Okay. So if I say I see it, I see is je vois, assume a masculine, I'm sorry, but how would you say I see it if it was masculine? Je, je le vois. Good. Je le vois. Same about twice. Je, je le vois. vois. How do you say I see him? Same shit. Je le vois. No je difference vois. between a human being and a non-human being there. I see her. What's I see her? Je la vois. I'm enjoying your vowel difference. It is exemplary. It is Thank exemplary. You. Take the compliment. Don't worry. You're on target. I see her. Uh, je la vois. Nice. I see them. Je les vois. No. Do we have a vowel there or not? Je les vois. Je les vois. Right, so rather than reading, just think, you're going back to this lesson one, you're going back to this, I start my French on the boat, this works for you, I start my French on the boat, <laughs> I go across the sea, je, so I, I start with a quick consonant and I go across the sea on a vowel. If I feel my mouth going vowel, vowel, mm. um, that's when I'll often do the, the, the liaison. So if I've got je, Lay, that's fine because I've got a cons I've got a consonant there. If I said, I buy it, I buy them. Je, lay, ah, Ooh, that's when your brain would go je, lay, les, les, les. That's why you do. It. So mm -hmm. try and find the liaison from the mouth rather than from um, visualizing that there's an S there or something. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. So would you please say for me the verb arranger? Copy me arranger. Arranger. Good. Would you now please say for me, I arrange them? Uh, je les arrange. Nice. Would you say for me, I arranged as an action, which means present tense in the middle. I arranged. I arranged. Action. Present tense in the uh, Yeah, so just standard. I, I, just think I arranged is, is right. Think about this. As long as it is an action, I arranged is the same as I have arranged. Just think that. As long as it is a single action, I spoke is the same as I have spoken. How would, how, how would you say if I gave you I have arranged, how would you say that? Uh, J'ai arrangé. You wouldn't worry, would you? So would you now just say I arranged, which as long as it's referring to a single action is exactly the same shit. Would you please say for me I arranged, say the same thing again. J'ai arrangé. Would you please say for me, he has eaten? He has eaten. Il a mangé. Would you now, assuming it was one action, would you please say he ate, which will be the same as he has eaten. Say for me, he oui. has eaten, he ate. Say it again. Il a mangé. That's it. That's all you need to think about. 
don't overthink the past. Don't overthink the past. That's okay. all it is. All right. Yes. All right. So now would you say for me, I have arranged it. You now need to pop your le into the middle of j'ai arrangé. How would you say that? J'ai l'arrangé. Ah, la, 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 la. What two words was j'ai made up of? Je. How okay. did we get j'ai? What's the word for I normally? Oh, je l'ai arrangé. So that's it. You need to crack that bitch wide open. Bollocks. Isn't that annoying? Je l'ai arrangé, yes? Right? Okay. Good. Je l'ai um, arrangé. What would be I have? I mean, fine, if it's he has arranged, il a arrangé. Look how easy that is. Il, il arrangé. l'a arrangé. That's no problem. Yeah, that's easy il to do. Arrangé. Yeah. What is we have arranged using nous? We have arranged. Nous. Nous. We have. We have. Nous. Nous avons. Arranged. Oh, nous avons arrangé. Nice. Good God, it went from like nothing to bilingual in like a second that was really good <laughs> now would you go now would you go we've only got 10 more minutes you'll find you find focus you're doing really well we have arranged it popular in the middle of nous avons arrangé what's that going to give me nous l'avons that's arrangé? it we're going to interrupt the nous avons well done that's it so, or nous les avons if we had a plural that's all that would happen that's all that would happen is good. that because Two of more topics the, the to thing do, that we said earlier have... Say that again, my darling. The thing we said earlier, the bits before verbs except before infinitives, is that why it's going before yes, the avoir? Think about it. Auxiliary is just another verb. So we're getting the oh. pronoun done as soon as possible. Yeah? Nous Let's. We've got two more topics to cover. One is when you have two different things in the same pronoun area, like so a direct and an indirect, and one which is when you go into the reflexive in the past. Let's do the two together first. So, this is what the book says. Um, uh, let me, what would, you know, what would they formally boringly say? Um, uh, it would be, um, yes, it would be the um, indirect, uh, the indirect precedes the direct apart from in the third person. You can't be walking around carrying that. Say for me, two, say for me two words. Just say for me two words. Two words. If one of them is an L. If one of them is an L. The L word goes last. The L word goes last. Say that. The L word goes last. Good. OK. Lesbians everywhere will rejoice at that. Lovely. If you now said, if you now said two L words, oh no, 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 I'm losing you and I've only got five, yeah, but we're back. Yeah, so just say that for me. Two, two L words, the longer L word will go last. Longer goes last. Just say that in English. Two L words, the the longer L word goes last. Two L words, the longer L word goes last. So if I've got, he gives me, il me donne. He gives it, il le donne. He gives it me, which is, what's the order going to be if I'm placing, you know, those pronouns together? Which out of le and me, which one's going to come first in the lineup? Me. Good, because the L word comes last. He gives it me, il me le donne. He gives it you, il te le donne. Il te la donne, il te le donne. The L word goes last. Okay. If it was, do you get what I mean by the L word goes last there? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. If it's he gives him it, he gives it him, which word is longer out of le or lui? Which word lui. is longer out of le or lui? Lui. So the, it will swap and the le will then go first. Il le lui done. It's that simple. The longer L word goes last when there's two. I don't mean to be arrogant, but that mm-hmm. shit is 10 times easier. If you have lay for them, direct, and leur, indirect, which is longer at lay and leur? Leur. So how would I say he gives them them? He gives them them. Il, les, yep. 
Give me the indirect one. Il est, il est, il est, where, yeah, but where's the, where's the other them? Where's the indirect them? Il est, le, il est leur don. Great. And that would be, il est leur a donné, <laughs> il est leur avait donné, il est leur donné. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. Okay. Other pronouns that we will do when we get further along will be e, the letter y, and en, en, and they go at the end. So okay. you don't even need to worry about them. They just automatically go at the end. So m, m and on, mon, m and e, me, they always go at the end. But you don't need to worry about those just yet. They'll be in about two weeks. Okay. So of your combination ones, m, you know, um, you, you're not... You know, you're not going to use the reflexive with the uh, the it here. You know, you're just going to have direct and indirect together. So, me le la, me le la lay, te le la lay, le la lay, lui, uh, nous le la lay, vous le la lay, uh, le la lay, leur. That, that's, that's all that you're going to have to put together now. And that, as long as you stick to the L words, we're fine. Final topic, final topic, final topic, this you'll like. Give, give me one second, I'm just telling Carol, one second. Um, and then you're good for, to go away and play with this. And there's lots of videos. OK. On. OK. Good, we're on target. Just one second. Um, Carol, Carol, Carol. Um, um, uh, uh, lovely. So we've spoken about how in French, some verbs in the past use the verb to be in the middle, haven't we? We've, we've not gone over them per se, but we know that, for example, I went is je suis allé or je suis allé. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, you'll notice it's also just the B in the middle. Yeah, it's just the present tense in the middle. The present tense in the middle. He mm -hmm. has eaten, he ate, il a mangé, oh. present tense have. He went, il a verb to be in the middle. Other verbs which put the B in the middle are automatically, there is no debate, there is no debate. Every single time you use a reflexive or a reciprocal both of those sets. There's no debate. So if you say, for example, he bought me, he for me has bought, il m'a acheté une fleur. Yeah, just say that for me. He bought me, il m'a acheté une fleur. He bought me a flower. Il m'a acheté une fleur. Il m'a acheté une fleur. Good. He bought you a flower, il t'a acheté une fleur. He bought us a flower, il nous a acheté une fleur. He bought them a flower, indirect, because he didn't buy them. He bought the flower, il leur a acheté une fleur. Go over those for any listened recording, but you get the point. It's going to be have in the middle. If you said he bought himself a flower, so what's the pronoun for himself? Sir. Good. You don't ever say il se a acheté. You'd have to say il say acheté. So listen to Auntie Lukey. Categorically, categorically, if your verb is reflexive or reciprocal, you need the verb to be. Okay. So will you just say for me poetry past? Poetry past. Which is my bullshit way of saying, look, we do not want every single time to be right. Right, hang on. Right, so je, pronoun for me, me, then the verb to be, oh, sweet. No, poetry means just learn those three words together and then stick whatever your past word is on the end. So would you just say for me, I am all the way down. Je suis, tu es, il est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont. Just say that for me. Uh, je suis, tu es. Il est, nous slide, sommes, together, vous... slide together slide. shows you've got them. Je suis, tu es, il Je est, suis, nous sommes, vous êtes, est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont. Notice how when you slide, you command muscle memory rather than intellectual memory. You're a bright, mm -hmm. bright, bright woman. But je me, you know, je suis, you let your mouth do the work. Yeah, good. Right. Have you ever been at the start of a routine and you go, I literally do not know what I'm about to go. Oh, my God, who needs to go? <laughs> Here we go, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And somehow it comes together. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like that. It's like that. Next up, would you quickly just say for me the pronouns? And the ones we're going to use, obviously, m and t and nu and vu can't change. But the ones that we've got that are flexible, we're going to use the reflexive. So just say for me, je me, tu te, il se, nous, nous, vous, vous, il se. Je me, je tu, me te, tu te, il se. Yeah, je me, tu te, il se, je me, tu te, il se, nous, nous, vous, vous, il se. Can you now say for me, I, can you now put those together? So, je me plus the relevant verb to be, 
to a plus the uh, sorry to to plus the relevant verb to be. So let's mm. do it the other way. So how do you say je me I suis? Am? That's it. Do the no. Do the same pattern with the two. So you've got je me suis. So what's the one going to be for the two? To to ta to te because we're in the verb to be. Yes, remember. To yeah. te. Yeah. Here's a nice uh, little idea. The verb to no, be. Listen. The verb to be is s or e. The verb to be to is be s or e. S or e. Yeah. So je me suis. What's the one for two again? To to te. Good. S or e. He. Give me the one for il. Il. Um. Il. Se. So what? How do you say he is? How do you say he is? Uh, to to to. No, listen, uh, listen, il, listen, il how do you say? To plain and simple, he is. Il. Il. Stick the so in the middle of it. What would it give me? Il say. That's it. What's we are? Nous sommes. Nice work. Stick the noop flown and um, stick the noop pronoun in the middle of it. What would that give me? Nous nous sommes. Nice. What you are? Vous. Vous êtes. Look at muscle memory. Now stick the pronoun in the middle of it. The double one. Vous, vous, vous êtes. Good. What's they are? Ils. Ils sont. Stick the reflexive. You know what it is because it's just a cell. That's it. So, mm. je me suis, tu t'es, il sait, nous nous sommes, vous vous êtes, ils se sont. You're going to have those down. So, last thing of the day, this is really neat. If you said, I spoke to myself, what is I spoke normally? J'ai pa J'ai parlé. Great. So, the past word of parler, we're going to keep. Okay. And it, so that's the, strictly speaking, it's the participle. Yeah, the past participle. So if you said, I spoke to myself, checklist. Is it in the past as an action? Tick one box. Mm. Is, it, is it a reflexive or reciprocal verb? Yes. So when both those boxes are ticked, da, 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 this is a job for poetry past. So what is the poetry for the je? It was, bum, 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 what was it? Je me, je me suis parlé. That's it. You the first well, person. You the first person that's ever stuck the parlay on it together. So if you were told that to get washed was a reflexive verb, automatically, and the verb is laver. It's a piece of shit easy verb. So how would you say I got washed? Reflexive past poetry past. What's I got Ooh, washed? Je me suis lavé. Lovely. I What would be you got washed? What's the poetry for to to? Tu t'es lavé. That's it. If it were you had got washed, you'd do exactly the same shit as normal. You'd make your middle verb was to tete laver all of this crap. That's it. Tu te seras lavé, tu te serais lavé. Nothing's going to change. You play with the auxiliary. What he spoke to himself. He spoke to himself. Il s'est parlé. Great. What we amused ourselves. We enjoyed ourselves. Poetry passed for nous. Uh, nous nous yes. amusé. Nice work. No mm. one has done this as well first time. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. You, let's say you got dressed, which is the reflexive verb. Sabie. Notice when you hear a verb and you know it's reflexive, but you don't hear so. That tells you that it's S apostrophe. So what is the verb that is sneakily hiding in sabie without the sur if it's asked to the left? What other verb does that mean that there is there? What's the sound sabie without a sur at the beginning? Habillé. That's the verb to get dressed. Lovely. All right. Okay. Yeah. So what would you plural get dressed? It's just obviously an ER verb. So what's um what's you plural got dressed? Vous vous, vous, vous sabie? Uh, vous, vous, what's the plot? I need the verb to be. Vous, vous. Uh, vous, vous êtes habillé. Flawless. What's they saw each other? Now, I saw is j'ai vu. Agreed? J'ai vu. Mm -hmm. Agreed that that's our past participle. So they saw each other. Reflexive. Well, we're, sorry, reciprocal. An action in the past. So if it's a reflexive, refle shut up, Luke. If it's a reciprocal and it's an action in the past. Da, 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 da. It's a job for poetry be. and the past. So it's then you have to use be. So it's il to be. Uh, il sont. Where's my reflexive though? I need the reflexive in there. Il, 
Il se... Come across, il se... Il se sent. And finish it, they saw each other. Il se sent... Il se sent vous. Good. So let's say I saw myself, you saw yourself, he saw him, himself. Je me suis vu, tu t'es vu, il s'est vu, nous nous sommes vus, vous vous êtes vu, il se sent vu. Let's say it was um, I got washed. Je me suis lavé, tu t'es lavé, il s'est lavé, nous nous sommes lavés, vous vous êtes lavé. Yeah. Um, I introduce myself. Je me suis présenté. Tu t'es, tu t'es. T apostrophe es to just think if you can't find it yes. what you are to a to t so je me suis présenté tu t'es présenté il s'est présenté nous nous sommes présentés vous vous êtes appelé yeah I got up the verb to get up se lever je me lève so when you go into the present tense it goes into a different sound je me lève but um it gains a graph but um to get up se lever I got up je me suis levé I woke up, the verb is se réveiller. Brooklyn woke up, Brooklyn say réveiller. Because yeah. she wouldn't say elle say, it's say yes. Brooklyn say réveiller. Yeah. All right? So in overview, things to remember for next time from pronouns. First thing, me and te and nous and vous will be the same for all three groups. Yeah? Yeah. Second thing, me and te go to me, nous and vous go to nous vous. All right? Yep. Third thing, when you have the direct, you're going to be the verb in the with no pronoun is just going to go straight from the verb into the object. So I love Brooklyn. I know yep. Brooklyn. I see Brooklyn in the French. Don't be listening to English whether or not there's a two or not. All right. Okay. Indirect would mean that the thing is being is present in the sentence, but it's not. It's either a. It's either A, there's another object in the sentence which is direct, or B, in the French, it requires an A. And sometimes these things do this. So jumping ahead to allow somebody, you allow the behaviour to the person. So it would be permettre à quelqu'un. To permit to somebody, so yeah. I allow him to speak, je lui permets. So in other words, if in your dictionary you learn that it's indirect, you've got to stick to lui and leur, all right? All we've done is say, look, mutter and nu and vu, that's fine, 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 fine. But we've got lui and we've got sur for self. Yeah? Je me lave, tu te laves, il se lave, nous nous lavons, vous vous lavez, il se lave. We've got lui and le for the indirect, single and plural, l u i l e u r, And we've got le, la, le for the direct. Yeah. We've talked about joins. We've talked about, look, if it joins with a vowel, je l'ai fait, I have done it, I buy it, je l'achète. I buy them, je les achète. We've spoken about that a great deal. We've also said that if we go into different tenses, who gives a shit whether it's he buys it, il l'achète, or he has seen it, il l'a vu. We don't care if for whatever reason, the next word starts with a vowel, you're going to do the same join. Mm -hmm. whether, it's, whether it's an auxiliary in the middle or whether it's, um, you know, um, whether it's, um, you know, just a verb that starts with a vowel, you know. Um, there's a couple of exceptions, but don't worry about those for now. Um, then we've talked about, well, right, if we, what if we've got the pronouns for both things? You know, fine, the, the L word that goes last or the longer L word goes last. And you did yep. that section beautifully straight away. We then spoke about what would happen if we had a reflexive verb in an auxiliary tense. It's not just this one. It could be any of them. Je me suis lavé, je m'étais lavé, je me serai. And that is when all I need you to have for next time, not even next time, you don't even need it for next time. You need it for when we get to conversation week. You, you don't need any of this for the, the next class. Like none of it needs to be used. Um, we're doing something totally different. For the next time we need it though, all you need to go is go, oh, hang on, poetry passed. Je me suis, tu t'es, join, il s'est, nous nous sommes, vous vous êtes, ils se sont. Why are they problematic? Because some of them stick to... To take, join, say, join, no, separate, but with a link, il se separate. When you start going to the etes, I had got washed, you had got washed, it'll all be the same. Je mettais, tu mettais, nous nous étions, vous vous étiez, il s'était. When you go to the will, 
I will have gotten what? You will have gotten what? That all is separate. Je me serai. Tu te seras. Il se sera l'abbé. Vous, vous. Not that you need to know any of this now, but if we go to one of our will have tenses, they'll all be separate. Yeah. So all I need from you now, although you're quite welcome to think, well, what tense is the verb to be in other places? That's not for you to worry about. I just need you to make sure you know the slogans from last week. Just the slogans. Yeah. If you want them again, I'll WhatsApp you them. Just literally the sense and make sure that you know mutter nouveau lui leur le la lay and then the poetry passed. That's literally your revision sheet for this week, is what I've just said, yeah? Okay, perfect. Brilliant. You did phenomenally well. Thank also, you. it's still grammar. You've got more grammar sessions, and then we go into normal speech. And everything you do just gets used in context and it instantly feels less shit, less weird, less uncomfortable. It never feels nice when it's in abstraction. It just feels, it just feels like odd. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it's like, do you know, it just it just it, it just feels odd. Some people love bar, some people love center work, some people love a routine. Yeah, and it's just an abstraction, it's not just gonna feel a little bit odd. Because it doesn't sound like language, but the minute you go, oh my god, I realized like dar sequenta in Spanish again, reflexive. So I realized je me so, so rendre compte, je me suis rendu compte. And you then go every time, say, oh, well, I realized je me suis rendu compte, that's whatever, whatever. I got washed this yes. morning, um, you know, um, whatever. She'd nick my shampoo, bitch, I'll kill her. Je me suis lavé ce matin, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, you know, she told me she was going to replace it. Elle a dit, she said, elle m'a dit. No, she was going, elle allait to replace it, elle allait le remplacer, it for the shampoo, shampoing, masculine. Once you start using pronouns with stuff, it's like, oh my God, that makes so much sense because we've now spoken about it. So by definition, Brooklyn, all I need you to do is when we get to conversation week and I go, do you get why we've just done that? And you go, oh yes, because hang on, direct the word, le for shampoo, the masculine, direct. When we get to conversation, why we're doing it and you right now are giving yourself a hard time that your recall is instant on everything that we've done i don't want to stop you i like the self-hatred it's an incredibly good <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's just all we get to is the point that when i go do you understand why this would be this i say i'm going to do it and you say right okay je vais le faire great why le oh yeah because it's, it's masculine look before the verb luke you told me that bits before verbs except before infinity i was going to do it oh hang on luke was tense everybody a so verb to go allez j'allais le faire do you know what i mean that you just work it out like that and i'm free all right mm -hmm. good loads yeah. of love loads of love S a sterling performance all right thank you breathe out shoulders down stop being on audition <laughs> Thank right. you. You're doing really, really well. And I don't blow smoke of asses. I don't, as you know from videos. OK, I don't. You're doing really, really well. Yeah. You have zero every day. And your mouth and your accent is lovely. Lovely. All right. Speak okay. to you soon. Thank you. Bye, Luke.